Hi everyone, and thank you for joining us. In today's video, we will be covering how to create simple objects in BW Bridge for SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. We will start off in HANA Studio with our BW Bridge project already open. Now, we have already covered how to set this up in previous videos, so please do check those out if you need help getting to this point. Just to refresh your memory though, this is where you would actually find the BW project. So we right click new project and BW bridge project. Now this should look very familiar to anyone who has done modeling in either BW or BW for HANA. The project type is what gives us those minor differences. So if you're already familiar with modeling in HANA Studio or Eclipse, you really have nothing to worry about. We're going to begin by creating an info area. So let's do that by right clicking on new and info area. We then enter our name which let's just put this as and a description and hit finish. We will then get a prompt for a transport request. I already have a request here which I've created previously. If not, you can just go ahead and create a new request here. So once you're done with that, we just hit OK. And we have our new info area created. So let's create a few info objects. First, we right click on our newly created info area. Go to new and info object. We then need a name and description. So let's enter that. As in BW, the length of the technical name is between, between three to nine characters. So please do ensure you keep to that. Then we just confirm that our info object type is characteristic. And then we finish. As before, we get the from for the transport request. Click OK. Now we have our partially created object. As we can see below here, it is still in an inactive state under properties. At this point, we still have the ability to change things like the length, whether you're using master data or you have additional text or you'd like hierarchies as examples. In our example though, we're just gonna keep this simple. So I'm gonna go with the default settings and we will activate that here. And now we see that the object is active and available in our info area for further use. Next, we're going to create a key figure. As before, right click on our info area. We go to new and info object. Then we name our object. As before, the same rules apply. So this is three to nine characters. Then we change this object type to key figure. And in this case, we're just going to go with an integer and finish. Then we get the prompt for our transport requests. Okay. As before, we have a partially created object at this point. You can see that the state is still inactive. We still have the ability to change certain settings, like if we want to use uh, non-cumulative 
key figure type or if we'd also like to change things like your aggregation and display and things of that nature. For this example, we are going to stick to the default settings. So let's just activate this. And as we see in the properties, we now have an active key figure. We'll also see this in the catalog as under the key figure. So now let's create an advanced DSO to add these objects to. As before, we right click on our info area, go to new and data store object advanced. Then we give our DSO a name and a description. As before, remember the name needs to be between three to nine characters and we hit finish. We then prompt it with the transport requests. We hit okay. And we have our partially created DSO. Now we still have the ability to change the properties of whether this is a standard DSO, data mart, or direct update. For this example, I'm just going to run with a staging DSO. Now let's add our info objects. For that, we go to details and under the group or groups, in this case, we're just going to have one. We can change this to any name we want. Let's just change this to blog and add info objects. Then we search for info object. Now you can either double click or drag this across. So that is one way or here you drag it across. Same thing. This was for the key figure. So now we do this for the characteristic as well. And hit OK. As we can see, we have both characteristic and key figure available. So let's go ahead and activate this. And we have our DSO activated. Now that we have our DSO and objects, let's look at how to load the data. So first up, let's create a transformation. And that is done by going to our DSO. We right click. We go to new and now this these options are limited to transmission and data transfer process so we go to transformation first now normally we would source this either from a data source or another dso in this example just to keep it simple we're going to loop on the same dso so i'm going to select dso and put in the same name of the dso we've just created and hit finish we will get our transport again and we have our transformation that's partially created so let's take a look at the rules now we can see that the system has already generated the links for us based on what it can understand so here we can just accept this and activate And that is done. And lastly, let's create the data transfer process or DTP. So we're going to head over here again to our DSO, right click, new and data transfer process. As you can see, it has already generated the target and the source based on the transformations that were available so we can just hit next finish and okay on our transport request i'm going to keep the settings as default and just activate this and we can see that our dtp is active and that concludes part one of this demo, which is creating simple objects 
in SAP BW Bridge for Data Warehouse Cloud. As we mentioned at the beginning of this demo, anyone who has modeled in Eclipse or HANA Studio on BW would be very much at home. Do check back for part two of the series where we will be showing you how this integrates with SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. Thank you.